Now, today you might have found the stock market a little bit warning, but just wait. The market is getting ready to do something. How do we know? Well, look today. What did that spy do all day long? Nothing more than a gap up, chop, 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 chop all day long. And we see the fear and greed index moving to about 62 from a previous reading at 58. However, intraday, it was over here about 65 or so. Then as we look at how the indices fared across the board, the Dow was up 273 points. The NASDAQ was up 48 points. S&P 500 up 15 points. Russell 2000 up 3.6. We look at advancing issues versus declining. We had 68.8% of issues advancing on the day. Then as we come over and look at the sectors across the board, only two sectors were in the red. One of them being technology, the second one being energy. The leader out there today was financials. Now, as we come over and look at crude oils that they got pummeled out there today, notice what we we're able to do. We got below this recent swing low right over here. If we can get back above 68.19, then maybe just maybe we'll be able to fill the gap from today. But why was crude oil going so much lower today? Very simple. Israel already went back on the offensive against Iran, and now people are speculating there's going to be no more escalation in the Middle East. If that's going to be the case, we know we have a demand issues as economies around the world continue to slow down. We look at the dollar index today. Dollar index, basically a candle of indecision, wick on the top, wick on the bottom, and we basically open and close roughly in the same area. Also, we look at gold today. Gold still firming up, trying to make its run right up here to 27.82. Let's not forget, we also had that nine count show up just a few days back, and the nine count signifies we're likely to go sideways or potentially start to reverse. Think about nine count is showing exhaustion in the market, and that's exactly what has been transpiring at this point. Now, if we look at yield today, the 10-year yield on the move up once again, but basically closing with a doji candle, meaning we open and close roughly in the same spot, a little bit of a wick on the top, a little bit of a wick on the bottom, and let's not forget, there's only nine days left until the next FOMC meeting, and the market is anticipating the Fed is going to cut rates by 25 basis points. But does it really matter? Because we scroll back, the Fed cut rates down here, and the interest rates have only went higher from that point on. Now, as we look at the volatility index, basically going sideways, the VIX today down 48 cents on the session. But look, as we came running into the close, what do we see the VIX doing? The VIX is on the rise once again. If we look at the heat map out here for the NASDAQ, notice the king of AI was down today. NVIDIA was down. Microsoft was down. However, Apple, Google, and Meta were all up on the day. AMD having a very strong day out there as well, up roughly 2% on the session. However, the main one of the main problems we had out here for today was a simple fact that when we look at the economic news, we had no major catalyst for the day. We look out here for tomorrow and what is on deck. Starting at 9 a.m., we have the S&P CS Composite 20 HPI year over year. Then at 10, 10 a.m., we have consumer confidence, followed by new home sales. Then we get the Richmond Manufacturing Index. Now, I got to be honest with you. I was a little bit disappointed today. All day long during the live stream, we kept talking about this area potentially being tested. I took a couple shots at it. I was able to, to produce a couple winning trades. However, we never made it all the way down to that level. Now, if you want to make sure you don't miss the next live stream, make sure you're subscribed and you have the bell notifications turned on for all. Now, when we come over and look at the diamonds today, notice what do we do? Basically, nothing more than an inside day. Well, what about the Russell 2000? Russell 2000 having a nice little lift up, basically bounced off the 78.6 Fib level a few days back and now is on the grind up higher. However, is this temporarily? Because like we talked about when we looked at the heat map, NVIDIA was down today. NVIDIA basically struggling a little double top price action. We look at Tesla. All the Tesla bears have been trapped since the gap, but notice what Tesla did today down 6.68%. Then we look this week and we are filled with a lot of earnings coming out. Today after the bell, we have Ford, but tomorrow before the opening bell, we have SoFi, PayPal, BP, McDonald's, just to name a few. After the bell, AMD, Alphabet, Snap, Chipotle, and Visa. Wednesday, we have a lot of earnings as well. Microsoft, Meta, Coinbase, Robinhood. Thursday, Amazon, Apple, Intel. We have a lot of heavy hitters on deck for this week. So is the market essentially playing possum at these levels? And what I mean by that is look at the cues real quick, all right? Basically rejected off the top of this upper level consolidation area. We look at the four hour chart, basically MACD is flatline, not a lot to see there. On the one hour chart, just starting to get that cross over. Now today, we were able to come back and close the gap. And this is something we talked about for the first 30 minutes of today's live stream was the fact that I expected the cues to come all the way down Fill in today's gap. Why is that? We had gap number one, not filled. Gap number two, not filled. The third consecutive gap, highly probable we fill the gap. Now the question is, 
do we start to turn lower? We still had an inside day out here today, meaning the low was higher than the low from Friday and the high was definitely lower than the high from Friday. Now, if we're going to go lower, where do you think my eyes are set for? If you guys said the gap right down here, you would be absolutely correct. Now I want to make everybody aware Apex have a massive 80% sale off all their evaluation accounts passing as little as one day, $85 activation fee across all account sizes. If you like to trade the larger accounts like 150, 250 and 300k account sizes, after applying promo code Mike, you can you can get those accounts for only $50. If you'd like to take advantage of this offer, use the link in the description box down below. Use promo code Mike at checkout. Now, when we come over and we look at the futures markets real quick, what do we got on the four hour chart? Maybe a little double top ish price pattern. Now, if we want to go ahead and measure where would this actually complete at? And we would have a completion point of about 20,208. Now, notice what else we we're able to do today. Here was value area high off the weekly. Are we trading below that price point? The answer is yes. Where is the first target right here at the point of control? Check that one off. Target already has been completed. However, just below us, we do have this mines development area. I do want to watch, and we'll be talking about this area tonight during the live stream as well. But this mines development area really comes from about 20,424 down to about 20,408. If we can breach below that, maybe we get the full volume profile rotation all the way down through value area low. As we come over and we start looking at the daily profiles, notice we are closing below value area low, even though it might not be by a whole lot. But 20,516.50 is going to be value area low. The point of control, which will be an untested point of control, will be 20,536.50. Value area high is going to be up here at 20,602.50. How do I want to play this? Very simple. If we stay below value area low, I want to target this minus development area right down here. I'm going to go ahead and mark this off for us. Now, that area really starts at a price point of about 20,454 down to about 20,441. Anything below this minus development area, my eyes are gonna turn their attention over here towards the untested point of control at 20,354. It's a very easy if then syntax. Now, with that being said though, keep in mind when we close outside of value, means that, to, that means that within the next two trading sessions, we are likely gonna come back and test value area low. So if we get above value area low, that's when this point of control from today comes into play. And also let's not forget about this mice development area within the profile that could come into play, which we'll talk about more in tonight's live stream. Now, when we come over and we look at the, say the SPY real quick, the SPY, we talked about this consolidation that we had all day long, but we come over and we look at the daily chart. Notice we're trying to come back down and potentially test the bottom of this upper level consolidation. Then on the four hour chart, what do we got going on? MACD indicator is still crossed to the downside, working down towards the zero line. Now, if we start to get a breakout here this week, one of the areas I do want to watch is going to be about 579.39. Beyond that would be about 571.03. On the one hour chart though, we can see the MACD indicator trying to flatline right near the zero line in today's gap. We did not come close to filling that gap. So was that set up? Maybe tomorrow we might get a play down towards filling that gap, or maybe we just simply leave it behind. Now, the key is going to be since we have a Diaz and dog shaped profile and we have an inside day, I expect the first way we break tomorrow is likely going to be nothing more than a trap. So if we come up tomorrow morning, we're breaking to the upside. That could be nothing more than a trap that's in the market back lower, potentially filling the gap. And with all the earnings coming out tomorrow after the bell, maybe it's a little bit of uncertainty that gets the market trading down towards lower prices. When we come over here and we look at the S&P real quick, the futures markets, what do we got going on? Well, so far we are staying within last week's volume profile levels, meaning between value area high and value area low. But as we scroll this up a little bit and we start looking, this is one of the areas I talked about in Sunday's video was this minus development area. Well, if you notice, we've basically come into it on two candles, this four hour candle and then the last four hour candle. If we make it a third or fourth time, it's likely gonna break. And at that point, I'd wanna focus on the point of control down here at about 58.50. As we dive down, we start looking at the volume profile levels real quick. Notice what we had today, a Diaz and dog shape profile. Now I'm gonna clean off the drawings a little bit. And as we're looking at this, we're closing right near value area low, which will come in at about 5862.75. The point of control is going to be about 5869.75. Value area high is going to be 5874.25. Now, if we can start getting back above value area low, I do want to target this point of control. However, if we start breaking value area low, 
Then I wanna turn my attention to some lower prices. And again, I wanna refer back over here towards the weekly chart and really and start to focus right here towards last week's point of control at about 58, 50.25. Keep in mind, as we look over here on the 30 minute chart, what do we have last night? We had a large gaping gap. If that gap does not fill by Thursday, it's likely gonna be several weeks before we come back and fill that gap. And I actually believe it's likely we're gonna start working on trying to fill, fill that gap sooner than later. Now, if you guys like to learn about my funded futures approach to direct funding, watch this video right here.